Hi everyone, my name is Bailey Conrad and I'm a program coordinator at Harborview Medical Center. This is a series of presentations on how to apply for SSI disability for newly arrived refugee clients. In this presentation, we're going to cover how to prepare for the SSI interview with your client. So once you have scheduled the interview for SSI benefits, and you've filled out the online application, um, disability application for your client, the next step or really a concurrent step with filling that online application is really to prepare your client for the interview. A lot of these interviews are now done over the phone. Um, if it's in person, you can submit the following documents to the um, SSA adjudicator at the point of the interview. If it's over the phone, you uh, can submit them once the interview has been um, completed. So the first couple of documents are basic identification documents, uh, an I-94 or a birth certificate if possible, an ID of any kind. This can include the employment authorization ID if your client has that. Medical records, if it's an in-person interview, SSA might be interested in making copies of some of those records, um, especially if you haven't filled out that online disability application. Um, and then things like a DSHS award letter if your client is receiving cash or food benefits and a copy of the lease agreement. If your client is living with family and isn't officially on a lease, um, Social Security will accept just a typed up brief statement stating how much your client is expected to pay um, for rent every month and have it signed by both parties. Um, otherwise, really, they just need the part portion of a client's lease agreement that states their address and how much the family is paying per month. And then finally, submitting the signed authorized representative form, which is also known as um, SA-1696. There will be another presentation on this specific form, but basically if your client allows it, um, it's a form that allows you to be their representative to Social Security, and that allows you to call and follow up with the claim um, as it moves through all the steps of the process. So I have found it useful in the past to have a conversation with my client to prepare them for the actual SSI disability interview. Um, this interview can last multiple hours, especially if interpretation is needed. And um, since it's given by you know, a government entity, that can be daunting to clients who may have faced persecution from the government um, that they fled from overseas. So I found it useful to have a, just kind of an informative conversation with clients to help them understand what's going to be asked and why it's asked. Um, explaining again what SSI benefits are, you know, just briefly saying this is a government program that um, provides uh, funds to those who are low income and have a disability can help sort of just set the stage. And then just making sure that they know this is a government entity and they're going to be asked a lot of questions to determine their eligibility um, can, can hopefully help with um, some of, you know, the apprehension that, that clients may face in having this interview. You can also explain that they're going to be asked a lot of basic information about themselves, their income, and their health, and that they should just answer as honestly as possible. Um, you know, one example I gave in a previous presentation was um, about a client who didn't know her date of marriage. Um, that's okay. It's okay for her to say exactly that to the adjudicator um, when asked. I also try to let clients know that some of the questions might be confusing and it's okay to ask for a clarification from the interpreter. Um, if the interpreter doesn't know how to clarify, they will then ask the adjudicator to help explain what that question means in a way that the client can understand. 
One other key thing to keep in mind and something that I also tell uh, clients is that this process is the same for anyone who qualifies or who is eligible across the United States. So there are many questions um, in the interview process that are really not applicable to new arrivals. And letting your client know that um, prior to the interview can sometimes be helpful. This is particularly um, pertinent in the financial section where there's a lot of questions around pensions and retirement funds um, and things like that, which many clients likely do not have any access to or never had to begin with. Along those lines, it's good to know that your clients will be asked questions about owning property or assets anywhere in the world. And so if they do own property or have assets, uh, it's important to say yes um, and to, you know, explain the, the circumstances around that asset. There will be another presentation um, around what to do if someone does own property overseas but doesn't have access to it any longer, which is the case with a lot of refugee clients. And then another uh, final tip is to just, if you're there with the client, to let the interviewer know that the online application has been submitted or to tell your client that if the interviewer starts asking them a lot of questions about their medical history, for your client to then prompt the interviewer to say, you know, my caseworker applied online for me already. Sometimes this is not really clear um, in the system when a client is being interviewed. And so sort of prompting um, that response will help the interviewer look further for that information um, if it's not available immediately to them. This will help the application go much faster, the interview go much faster. Um, and hopefully, you know, you can either explain to your client that you've submitted this beforehand and so that they should, you know, kind of let the, the um, adjudicator know, or if you're there, you can also provide that information. So tips for you as a caseworker and sort of some things to know. One is that the SSI interviewer might not be familiar with refugees or that the status qualifies for SSI eligibility. Um, there will be a link in this presentation for the page on the Social Security website that states refugees and other similar immigration status holders are eligible for SSI. Um, but the interviewer might also have never interviewed somebody who, um, you know, came from overseas and might be a little bit thrown off by that during the interview. Um, also, looking over the interview questions, there's a link here uh, to the full SSI interview. That can just be helpful um, before explaining to your client what to expect. I know it's easier for me to explain something if I've actually seen kind of what's going to be asked. Um, if you've attended an interview in person or with your client over the phone, you also are likely aware of what's going to be asked and that can be helpful to you. Um, attending these appointments with clients, if possible, I found that to be really useful. This is especially if your client has concerns around authority figures or is really nervous. Um, if the appointment is an, uh, a phone appointment, you can attend with them and let the interviewer know that you're there. Um, or if it's in person, you can attend with the client. In those cases, I tend to provide moral support and not necessarily answer questions unless I find that the client is really confused and the interpreter is not understanding what they're saying or if they're just really struggling to provide information, then I might step in and say something. But um, really, you're, you're not there to answer questions. You're really just there to help them and support them and make sure if there's any confusion, you explain things like, oh, well, they're a refugee and this is a, a qualifier for SSI or other um, you know situations like that. And then, like I uh, mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, bringing or sending copies of all of those documents after the interview will make sure that Social Security has everything 
to move forward with the process. At this point in the SSI application process, one other thing that caseworkers can do is to start gathering the documents that you will need to submit to Social Security on behalf of your client after their interview. And in my experience, it worked best to create a packet of documents um, with a cover letter like the one seen on this slide and submitting all of that information at once, either via fax, mail, or dropping it off in person. Um, so we'll go through a couple pieces on this slide that I just want to point out. One is whenever you submit any paperwork to Social Security, you want to make sure that your client's Social Security number is listed on every single page of that paperwork. Usually I would just write it in on the top right uh, corner, but that way you're ensuring that if documents get separated from your packet, the Social Security Administration can easily look up the claimant and figure out who um, that document belongs to. The next thing I will mention is you can see in the language of the letter, I write um, really explicitly about this person's uh, immigration status. And the language I'm using here, I'm taking from the Social Security Administration's website um, on non-citizen eligibility for SSI. Uh, that will be that website will be linked in the guide that uh, accompanies this presentation on the Ethnomed website. But the reason I do this is you want to just make sure at every point in the process that you can that you're really clearly clarifying that person's immigration status in case you're working with an SSA representative who maybe doesn't know a lot about um, refugees or the, the fact that they are eligible for this uh, benefit. And then you see I just list all of the documents that I'm attaching. This is a pretty general list. You might um, need one or two other documents based on how the interview goes, but what I would always include is whatever immigration document your client has, an I-94 or um, similar documentation, a copy of the employment authorization card or another, another ID. Uh, if they're receiving DSHS cash or food benefits, the award letter that states this, their lease agreement that says um, how much they're paying per month, and then two signed forms that'll, that will be signed by your client. One is the SSA 827, which is the medical authorization form that allows Social Security to, to get the medical records um, from the clinics directly that your client is being seen at. This form will also usually be sent in the mail for your client to sign, but um, if you can preemptively just submit it, you don't have to worry about following up on the mail and making sure uh, it's received. And then finally, if you are signing on as an authorized representative, um, the signed uh, SSA 1696 form, which I will be going over in another presentation so you know how to fill that form out. 